Hello. Hello. Hello, Laura. Can you hear us? Yes, it's working. So I'm so sorry about no, that. Don't worry. Do not worry right, at we're, all. We're wrapping up here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> bye. The interview's no. finished. Yeah. So you, you you enjoyed working with Marcus. That's it. Yeah. yeah. I had to do the classic turning it off and on again, but it's all good. Yeah. So you've got like a really good setup there. So I know you do voiceovers and stuff, do you? Is that is that what it was built for? Yeah, it's not really that exciting because if I just turn my computer around, you can see that my room is an absolute fucking mess. <laughs> it's called in. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's just a spare bedroom, but I do do voiceovers. Marcus Thanks. was saying, Laura, that you you kind of got into acting a bit later. So when you were in your thirties, is that right? Like you hadn't done anything at all before then? I will correct you. That is actually wrong. Um, <laughs> I went to yeah. Everyone says that, but it's only because I got into it professionally um, at a later age. But no, I went to drama school. I guess from a young age, I was thirteen or fourteen when I started. It's not a full time drama school, but it was the Anna Sher Theatre School, which is in Islington, um, and it was like a part time kind of evening summer school. So you go there all throughout the summer holidays, Easter holidays, um, evenings, weekends. Um, and I was there for a couple of years up until I was 18 and then I went off and I did a, a BTEC in performing arts and then I did a HND in performing arts um, and then I got married and had kids and forgot about it for years and got back into it when I was 32, yeah. So, right. so your priorities yeah. changed basically, like you said there, you had a family. Yeah. Yeah, but I'd always, ever since I was 11, like, um, since I started senior school, because I, 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 I didn't grow up in a family that went to the theatre or anything like that. We used to watch telly, um, but I didn't really know, uh, this sounds really naive, but I, I mean, I sort of knew what theatre was, but I'd ne I never went, I was never taken, we never went to the pantomime or anything like that. So the first time I saw theatre performed in front of me with real life people was when I was 11 and we had um, a TIE group, you know, like theatre in education. Mm -hmm. Um, and they came into my school and they did this play. Uh, it was really, I think, what was it called? It's called Too Much Punch for Judy. It was about, it was like a drink driving thing. And I just thought it was brilliant. And I was like, oh my God, like, I've never, I'd never seen anything like that before. And I literally, that moment, I was like, I want to do that. That's, that just looks really good fun. And so it all kind of started from senior school, really, from 11 and 12. And yeah. Right. And what about you, Lawrence? What was your journey into, into acting? Um, well, it's probably about a similar age. I think I was, my mother used to sign me up for everything. Um, sports, drama, arts, crafts. So she, she kind of got me into a local, well, I did loads of things at school, and, but it, where I'm from, there's a place called Cresters Theatre and it's, it's quite known on the, on the amateur scene producing really good work. It has a youth group and I was there from very early. I must've been nine or 10. Um, and then I, something I carried on through school alongside playing lots of sports, um, playing lots of football specifically. And um, then, I got, then I just sort of tumbled into other, like the Orange Tree Theatre in Richmond. Then I was at the Artist Theatre School. It was run by Amanda Redman. Then I went to Barbara Speaks on a Saturday. Then I got into the National Youth Theatre. Then uh, I'm missing anything out here. Then I was part of the BT Connections at the Royal National Theatre when I was 14. And then... I took a year out and then I got into Guildhall. I did three years there and I've been a professional since 2004. So I just did everything I possibly could. That's it. Yeah, that's what you were touching on, Laura, wasn't it? About being professional, you know, being paid to do it. That's what, obviously that's what being professional means. So what do you think about people starting out in, you know, student films or productions where they're not getting paid? Is that something that you think is good experience? Yeah, definitely for me, it was the only way for me, really. Um, so I went back to training when I was 33. Um, I went to the Bristol Old Vic and I did a year there. Um, and prior to that, I took myself and did a, uh, I did a summer school at the Bristol Old Vic to see whether or not it was something that I wanted to do. And it was. So I went back and trained and then I came out and I was told I was too old. I was told it was going to be really difficult. I was told I probably wouldn't get an agent. Um, and that I would have to start at the very bottom. And, I, and that was fine. I, I knew I would have to start right. And I really did start at the very bottom. And the first job that I ever did um, was for the NSPCC, I think it was. And it was some little commercial um, 
that was for domestic abuse or something. I was playing a Polish character and that was the first on screen thing that I did. And it was the first time I'd ever seen a camera and I didn't have a clue what to do. I literally didn't have a clue, but I just made it up as I went along, <laughs> as in I pretended I knew what I was doing, but I didn't really. Um, and then from then onwards, I got paid for that actually. That was the first job I did, but I did get paid for that. But then from then onwards, I kind of realized that, I realized quite quickly that you've got different levels of quality <laughs> out there and you can pick and choose if you're lucky. And I tried to choose um, quality work and, and, and uh, try to, and it didn't matter whether I was getting paid or not. I just wanted to do something that was good and learn and learn as much as I could. And so, yeah, I ended up doing some, some student stuff, but then a lot of sort of, um, you know, internet based stuff as well that never really saw the light of day, but it just got me in front of a camera and got me learning as I went along, really fumbled along, just figuring it out. Yeah. So it's all good, all good practice then. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, no one was, no one was going to give me a job <laughs> unless, you know, I put myself out there and that was the only way that I could do it. And of course, I was really lucky that I met some really good people in that process, you know. Um, you know, I, I've, got, I've got to mention Paul Holbrook is one of them. He, I met him really early on in in my career and he was really early on in his career as well. And um, we both just clicked and then and we're still working, writing and making stuff to this day. And the quality has just gone, you know, better and better and better and better every time as we learn. It's like we're going on this journey together and it's really cool. Um, but then, you know, it, I think about four years after drama, after leaving the Bristol Old Vic, I got an agent. Um, she was up like my fourth agent because every single agent was just slightly better than the, the last. And my agent I'm with now is brilliant. And she just took a punt on me and um, started putting me up for some decent work and, you know, managed to get some decent work and, but it's not easy. It's not like, as Lawrence knows, it's, it's hard, especially at my age of being a female as well. It's really hard. You just got to grow a thick skin and keep knocking on doors. Yeah. Is, is that why you, because I know that you write, like you said there, and you've got a short film coming out next year, which has Larry Lamb in it. You know, are you writing because you're, you want to create your own opportunities? Is that, was that kind of the inspiration for doing it? Yeah, it's the only, the only reason really. I'd never written anything in my life, never. Um, I sort of toyed with it, and over the years, I'd you know, kind of secretly written things and stored them away on my laptop. But I just thought, oh well, nothing will ever come of that. And it was just simply a case of not getting work and thinking, right, well, if you're not going to give me work, I'll write my own then. This is what I want to do. I want to be seen in this role, so I'll just write it and do it. And just you know and again Paul helped me out with that and just did it I mean I don't know what's going to happen to it who knows it's you know but if you don't try you don't know do you but yeah but then it kind of opened up another little avenue for me which was writing and producing and and I just thought well actually it's not as hard as I thought and and it's quite enjoyable and it is um, very fulfilling so it's something yeah I'm I'm definitely going down that route as well but I will cast myself in everything that I do by the way <laughs> yeah Lawrence you you also have experience with this I believe you've written and directed three shorts is that right yeah yeah to various degrees of um uh it's just the first two were like super cheap kind of like you know I did it on the fly but the other the the, the big one the 15 minute one Paddy which got into London Short Film Festival, that had proper industry behind it um, with proper cameras and crew and departments. Uh, yeah, that's like, I'm always writing something. It's generally um, generally humorous in some sort of way. I quite like Todd Solon's movies. I like a bit of, I like a bit of light in the dark. Um, and I've written screenplays and I've just been, uh, I've written some sketches recently for a BBC show. That's kind of what I do when I'm not doing when I'm not acting. Yeah, so I keep that bubbling along. Yeah. So again, I would, love you say, would you say that you're doing it to create your own opportunities? You know, because I mean, I, I teach students and I'm obviously encouraging them to create their own opportunities by going out there and just doing it. So is that what, you're, what you guys have both been doing? Like in the two of the shorts, they're kind of like silly. They're kind of, there's actually more like, no one will ever cast me in this. 
So I'm going to be as stupid as I possibly can. You can find it it's on my Vimeo page if anyone wants to check them out. Um, one of them is called The Hype Man. The other one's called Skype Sex. And <laughs> the third one is called Paddy, <laughs> which is kind of a welcome to the dollhouse type movie. It's sort of like a coming of age story about an overweight bullied kid from an Irish immigrant family uh, growing up in London. It's quite an amusing little tale. Um, but there's something that you know, never comes my way. Um, so if, if it's not, if the opportunity is not there, then, and you have the capacity to do it. I don't think there's really an excuse these days with the technology that's available, then you should really be taking a swing. And if you miss, you miss, you know, you've learned something along the way, just sort of fail upwards. And, and then when you go and meet someone like Marcus, when you go on a set with someone like Marcus, you have an experience of the challenges of, of a crew and you are more compassionate about why is this camera in my face? You're like, well, actually it's going to look fantastic. So just deal with it. Um, <laughs> because you're, you now have an understanding of the other side and the other complex problems. And it's not just about you and what your needs are. It's, you know, there's a whole team of people who need Marcus's attention as well. So uh, it's a good, it's good to know. It's good to know both sides of the coin, I think. Cause we're, at the end of the day, we're on the same, well, it's the same coin. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that brings us on to, the wife and her house husband, which you both star in. So obviously for you guys working in the industry acting, this is, I believe, both of your kind of first leading roles. So for you, Lawrence, in particular, I know you've worked with Marcus before on the on the short film, Two Strangers We Meet Five Times, which has just suddenly exploded on YouTube. So obviously you've got that experience working with Marcus. Laura, for you, I believe that you met him through his Zoom improv group. So tell us a little bit about that. Do you know what? It was through Twitter. How, what a weird place Twitter is. Um, he just used to make me laugh on Twitter. I was like, who is this guy? Who is he? <laughs> this Marcus Marku on Twitter saying all these random things, but always very inspiring and always very funny. And uh, I used to keep my eye on him. And then I guess maybe he was doing the same because he watched the film that I did and he sent me a message and said he really enjoyed it um, and and just kind of kept in touch. And then he messaged me and said, I'm doing this improv thing. Would you like to join in? And I must admit, I was a bit cautious at first. I was like, mm, I don't know about this. This sounds a bit suspect. And I was a little <laughs> bit like, I don't know. And he was like, come on, you really enjoy it. So we're doing this and this is why I'm doing it and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, all right, well, I'll give it a go. I'll give it a go. And then I really enjoyed it um did about six of those and that was really good fun and yeah but up until we shot the film i'd never actually met marcus um face to face as in in the flesh it had only ever been through this sort of medium yeah that's that's what i learned when i interviewed him that basically he ran this zoom improv group which had up to was it 10 actors in the in the kind of sessions something like yeah, that I think yeah. And he basically right. said that he and his producer Mirren really liked you. And then obviously when he was casting this film, different things happened and he thought of you for the role. So that must have been a shock, was it? When he when he then offered you the role? How did what, what did he say to you? Yeah, it was a shock. It was massive. I knew he was doing this film because obviously we keep an eye on each other um, on socials and stuff. So I knew that he had this film on the go. But at the same time, I was I was doing my film so I really I wasn't paying that much attention because I was like well that's cool you're doing that and I'm doing this crack on um and then literally out of the blue my agent rung me and said um I, I've been asked by um this filmmaker um whether or not you're available and um you may know him you may not his name's da 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 and he's doing that. and I was like oh god yeah I do I do I know of him yeah of course I've done this zoom thing um and at that point, I genuinely thought, well, that won't happen because I know how this works. They're going for a name it, because you do. And um, I was just sort of thinking, well, I'll be I'll be penciled for it. And I guess if the name can't get it together, the dates, then maybe I'll step in. Um, this was even after the original actress had gone. Um, but yeah, no, it didn't work out that way. It worked out. A good way. <laughs> How it should have done, Lawrence. Worked out all right, didn't it? 
Well, for me, the interesting thing there is that even though you were communicating via Twitter and obviously you'd, you'd had conversations through the Zoom thing, it still had to go through the agent. I mean, I know obviously oh. that the, they're the agent and stuff, but I thought a simple message to you, are you available or, or would you want to chat about this might have been the first thing, but no. No, no. That's because Marcus is very professional. Marcus knows how to play, to play the game and he does it right. And I think that was the right way to do it actually <laughs> right, okay it just keeps it more professional and it keeps it more business-like in terms of the actual business side of it i don't know how lawrence feels but um it also because i'd never met him before or worked with him before um i'm always super cautious i don't know why i have trust issues <laughs> probably um so him going through my agent just put put a little um made me feel more at ease about the whole thing because i knew that if anything was untoward i, I always have my agent sort of go back so she would have my back, you know. Not yeah. that I ever had any of those worries, as it turned out. It was all fine. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't a seedy, you know, sex thing or anything going on? No. Wasn't Lawrence's no. film Skype Sex or whatever it was called, Lawrence? No, no, it wasn't. <laughs> well, just tell me about your experience then, Lawrence, because obviously you had worked with him before. So obviously for Two Strangers, I'm sure that all went through the regular process, auditioning and stuff. For this one, was it just a simple phone call the week before rehearsals were going to start? Um, yeah, well, yeah, it was a very late night offer. Um, I think I've, I've seen your previous interview with him and he, I think he talks through what happened. It was a very, he called me at like 10 45 PM on a yeah. very late night the, towards the weekend. And then he asked me to read it. And then I gave him an answer at like quarter to two. And I said, call my agent Friday morning, basically. Um, but, and I think but he, he'd gone through a whole process of having actors attached and them dropping out at the very last minute, leaving him in the lurch. And then him sort of, I think I, I, it was sort of at the same time, what was happening was Two Strangers was kind of going viral. And I think I'd re-entered his life because he had to, so he was dealing with the, the tumbling views on, on Two Strangers. And I somehow entered the equation again, um, or for the first time. And, um, and what worked out for me, I, you know, I read it overnight I accepted it in the morning and then I was getting a COVID tested by midday, you know, and then I was <laughs> learning 70 pages of dialogue. Um, in yeah, very that's, short that's, notice. that's <laughs> the big thing for me that obviously it is very much a dialogue heavy film. It's very much the two characters. Was there a hesitance of shit? How am I going to learn all these lines? Or is that something that you actually find easy as actors? How, how did you process that? On the run. Yeah, I was. I must admit, I was shitting myself. I did think, Jesus Christ, how am I going to learn all of this? I, I mean, <laughs> do, you know, do you know what I mean? It, it was a lot of dialogue. And then I was secretly thinking, yeah, but I reckon he's got more lines than me, so he's going to struggle even more. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, you just uh, have to get in the right mindset and you have to really focus. And that's where, that's where maybe the training and a little bit of experience comes in is that you can learn to deal with it and... Um, Although I must say, Lawrence, I learned so much working with Lawrence. He's incredible. He's so, I've never worked with an actor that's so focused and professional and so he's, he just drills it. And he brought that out in me. And um, he was incredible. In Laura's just... defense, I, the, the same to her. I mean, I, thank you, Laura. That's so kind of you to say. But I mean, if it had been anyone else other than us too, I mean, I don't know how successful we, you know, how quickly we've been able to sort of get up to speed. Cause it was, it really was panic stations there for a bit. Um, yeah. Like nothing I've experienced. I, the only thing I can correlate to is when I was at drama school, we had to learn the Oedipus trilogy in a week. We had to pick, I was playing Creon and it was a lot, a lot of dialogue to learn. And I, I remember thinking, this is the same shit scared feeling I had at drama school. And I know I'm going to fail. I'm going to fail this part of the course. Everyone's going to hate me. I'm going to dry in front of my whole school. Um, but this time it's going to be on a set surrounded by, you know, <laughs> loads of people. But we, we, I don't know, we just, I, I cancelled my plumber. I had a plumber coming over that day and I, just, I called her up and I said, ain't happening. So I'm not having anyone in my house. <laughs> I've got lines to learn. And it, that tap's still not fixed as well. I need to get it back. <laughs> but that's what happens. Like blinkers go on. And you just got to, you just got to execute, you know? Yeah. I mean, in many ways, I think for you guys, I'd, obviously you, I'm interested to see what you're going to say. So I think for you, surely the hardest part is actually for you meeting for that first time for those rehearsals. You had a week of rehearsals, I believe, and then you were shooting. So you, you're playing a couple that's 
were married for 20 years. So how do you kind of act like you've known each other for that long when you've known each other for very little time? I mean, who knows? I think it's part necessity, but it's also, I think Marcus, even though he'd never met, met Laura in the flesh, like he made a really good, he found a really good match. He said, he's very um, instinctive, Marcus. Yeah. He, like with Sargon, he cast Sargon in a heartbeat. I mentioned that in Two Strangers, I mentioned that I'd gone to primary school with him and then I'd met him again as an adult um, in the theater. And I said, I mentioned him and he went, and he went, and you've known him since you were nine. And I was like, yeah, and he went, give him a call. And they called his agent like, within five minutes. He did the same on this, an actor dropped out because um, of uh, his girlfriend got COVID. And so I mentioned an actor, he cast the guy within five minutes. I mean, he's very, like once he gets a sense of you, he's very, he's onto you. And he almost knows everything about you. It's mm. really, he, it's really one of his major talents is intuition. It's probably in the same way that I imagine you have a story about how you met Marcus. I, I'm, everyone I've met, there's some, there's always some kind of story <laughs> <laughs> about how you've ended up in his life, you know? And uh, it's usually some kind of, you know, sharp decision that he's made and, mm. and usually the right one. I mean, yeah. what was the question? Well, how did we get here? <laughs> what was it? How did, how did we get to be so, uh, how did we get oh, to- yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, how do you other. portray how do you portray a married couple who's been married for such a long time when you when you've literally been you know stressing about the lines and then I believe you had some sort of zoom interviews or like some sort of therapy thing was that right we met the first time on uh, a FaceTime call didn't we like yeah. I, I said to, me and Laura were messaging or we like oh we'll start running lines on Wednesday so we'd been cast on Friday and then the next Wednesday we we just started each day running lines over Zoom so we had like Saturday to Tuesday to learn and then we were running by Wednesday so by the time we got to rehearsal we'd met over Zoom or FaceTime a few times hadn't we? Yeah we had yeah. We had to have that head start. Mm. That week of rehearsals was like it was so intense and so in, and so full on, but it was so vital and so much work was done in that week, wasn't it? Like, it was mad. Yeah. Actually, Marcus said something to me at the end of the, the shoot. He said, and some, no one's ever said this to me before, but he said, you've got, he said something like you've got really good boundaries. Because I remember saying to him, I said, Marcus, if I do this, I need you to, because this is such short notice for what you've asked us to do, I said, you don't change a line, at least until we've learned it, and then we can be a bit more flexible. Mm. I said, can we have somewhere to warm up in the morning? Because it's like each scene's 10 pages. So we just, I just need to, I'm going to treat it like a play. I'm going to be ready like it's a play. Mm. So each location, they, the, him and the producer had arranged a space for us to run lines in or warm up our voice in. Mm. And, um, and I said, Those, that, that rehearsal day, can we finish at three, just so we can, we can have two hours in the evening to run lines before we go home? And all those provisions were made. And, um, and uh, you know, when, as a younger actor, I wouldn't have asked those questions, but I felt really caught on every step of the way. As well, the fact was like, he showed us where we we're gonna be filming, where we were gonna be filming, uh, how we were gonna be filming, uh, who, who the actor was, the IMDB link to the actor who was gonna be in the scene with you. Like he, he knew exactly where all the anxieties lay. And he just said, there's a, there's a, whole, there's a bump in the road here. There's no longer a bump. There's another hole in the road down here. I filled the hole in. And it was constantly that the whole way. Um, yeah. Brilliant just man to work for. Seeing the locations themselves, even just for five minutes, just rocking up, having a look around, getting a sense of the space, where you were going to sit, how you might enter and exit, what, you know, just the, the size, the just really helped put your mind at ease so that when it came to that scene, you'd kind of already been there. You'd already seen it that little bit of anxiety had, had gone you dealt with that yeah and to bed. answer your question knowing the universe we were in where the, the spaces the characters would inhabit um what what that meant was that the marriage that we had to very quickly find our feet on we kind of he filled in all the blanks he'd send us character synopsis and mm -hmm. character breakdown and um their idiosyncrasies and their personality traits and so but i felt so I just don't know how it just sort of came. And by the time we got there, we were just kind of ready to go. We just kind of pulled the trigger and it happened. Knowing that you have been cast so late and had no real time to get to know each other. Because I mean, I've read stories about actors portraying married couples or, or friends 
and they put them in a house for like a month to live together. You know, so you've had nothing like that, really. You've just been thrown in completely the deep end. And that's why I'm interested to know what it was like for you. I mean, Laura, would you would you say it's been the hardest acting experience for you so far? It's not been the hardest. It's been the most rewarding and it's been the most um, almost like, like it sounds really dramatic, but almost like life changing. I mean, one of the one of my little sayings now is just surrender to it, Laura. Just let it go. Just surrender. Because that's all part of the traits of Cassie and the story, but also Marcus, you know, and um, I'm quite an anxious sort of person anyway, in general, in life. I worry about everything. I put myself down all the time. I'm always thinking the worst in myself or things. And and working on this with Marcus really taught me to just take a little step backwards and just, you know, take the foot. He he described it as taking your hands off the uh, the steering wheel, you know, keep your foot on the pedal, keep going, but just don't worry so much about where it's going, just let it happen. And um and I try and I try to implement that into my day-to-day -day life, even today, now, because it really um yeah, it really gave me so much food for thought. And I think I came back a slightly different person through the experience. Mm -hmm. Is that really dramatic? I don't know. No, I, remember no. having, I remember having a really, really early on, myself and Nora were kind of like, Marcus leave the room and first or second day. And we were like, how the, on earth did we end up here? Because yeah. I've been playing like, I played nice roles on stage, but not often on film. I've, I've sort of done nice little cameo roles in films or sort of, you know, bit parts here and there. So it's the first time I've been, I guess, you know, sort of headlining a film of sorts. And um, me and Laura just had this like one-on-one -on -one. we were like, do we deserve this? And we kind of like, we sort of sat there going, but who's going to want to watch a whole movie with me in it? <laughs> <laughs> and we really talked it out about our self-esteem and how we perceived ourselves. And it was, and like, I don't, I, I think it was just a really equalizing conversation, wasn't it? Uh, felt, after that, I felt really released. Yeah, I, I felt with me and Lawrence, it was like two equal minds coming together, although Lawrence is far more intelligent than me. Um, there you go. There's my there's my issues coming out there. But... Oh, she's in a bag. <laughs> oh, she's <got> <laughs> I don't know. It was just like I'd never been cast in in the lead in a feature film before, and all the roles that I'd been cast in previous, I play really gritty, sort of down and out, rough, ugly characters that you know. And I was like, "What you just you want you want." me to just look normal like nice um wow you're gonna put me in this nice outfit okay and it did take a couple of days to get my head around it um yeah and, and me and Lawrence you know we had a chat about it about it all and and it was like it it just made me feel so much more at ease and um that it wasn't just me I don't know if I could have done that film working with an actor that had an ego you know if I'd have gone into that film and felt inferior to my fellow actor that would have really done me no good at all and I probably would have ended up in a corner somewhere blubbing wanting to go home and that's one thing that I was quite worried about because I do have these issues where I'm like oh I'm not as good as that person oh they're a name they've done this they've done that I haven't I ain't done this I ain't done that and but I never had any of that with Lawrence because he's just so grounded and so normal and has you know I just didn't it took all that worry away which was amazing and helped huge and also she's brilliant i mean <laughs> um so, so lawrence obviously your character is the house husband how would you describe matthew and and what was it like to play this character um it's so funny because it happened so quickly i i felt like i was on set before all the questions had been answered so a lot of the time i was relying on the dna of what was in the text because I often think it, it will sometimes it's just there um so the characteristics of the character sort of they can't help but fall out of you and what as I was playing the scenes out I remember thinking oh there's lots of defensive humor here there's the, any emotional moment is is always kind of danced over with with a, a, a one-liner or a joke or he makes things light and there's this moments in the screenplay when he's sort of joking that their relationship lasted way longer than most couples who grieve when they lose a child and things like that. 
So that would, for me, that, that's something I do. Um, so when you're building a character on the run, try and bring it as close as close to me as possible. And that was one thing that I really um, was, that I, I could very quickly draw out of myself. Um, he's also, I mean, also that Marcus talked about their codependency a lot. Um, he relies on her. He's sort of um, disabled by the fact that he doesn't have a job and that he's relying on her for the income, being the breadwinner. Um, and she's relying on him to look after the kids. Um, and then he, he, he's at, at one point enabled her to get her drinking to go on and to take other partners and have this like, uh, this sort of dynamic um, uh, sexual life outside the home, outside the marriage bed. Um, what, what else? Um, what do you think, Laura? What do you think of Matthew? Well, I think in terms of Cassie, um, what do I think of Matthew? I think I think at the point that we see Cassie, she's been through she's been through such a journey already. So we're meeting her at a point when her life has changed. And if we'd have met her a year before or two years before, it would have I feel like it would have been a different a different character. Um, and she's very much on that healing path and she's very much surrendered to everything and surrendering and letting it just go. And that's, that brings out a different side to Matthew, maybe the side that she originally fell in love with. Yeah. And then the point of he's pulling away. She's, she's decided that she likes him and now he's he's gained some authority over his own life and authorship and he's now decided that he's going to fall in love again mm. he may apply for a job he may have a future without her he'll have his own home his own space yeah and um and that sort of perversity makes him attractive to her again yeah i think so um, yeah but also it's that fear of um i think that perhaps you just never really thought that you would go um and when the shit really did hit the fan and you really was and you really were, that being able to surrender and just accept it was the hardest thing that she's ever done in her life. Um, mm. And it's still, it would still be incredibly hard. Oh, yeah. I don't know. It's like that, that sort of, ch um, sort of chirpy, cheeky Essex boy persona was all was was kind of flattened by Cassie and everything that she was. So the thing that she fell in love with over the years just kind of faded a little bit. And then the distance that was created with this with the split and everything, it kind of started to resurface a bit. This, you know, you're saying about the humor in in the dark that you Oh, yeah, I don't know what yeah. I'm trying to say, really. But the, the opening scene, I remember that there's a whole, there's like a really, and the way it's written, it's really like this overlapping dialogue and it's full of rage and passion. And it's, I remember saying, I can't remember who said this quote, but it was, um, uh, there's, uh, it's something like, it's about, what's the woman scorned quote? So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a there is no, there is no hell, there's no fury like a man emasculated, um, was the expression. <laughs> and I think that's where he's at. Um, he's realized what he's done. He's, he's sort of sucked himself into this house husband role and he's now sort of questioning his own masculinity and his own, his own agency. Mm. Um, and, it's a, and it's a breaking free, but she's tried to disable that. She's, she's tried to stop that from happening by leaping in between him and new relationships even though she's been polyamorous pretty much for the last couple of years. Mm. And the, fil the film was obviously shot in nine days. You lost two days because of COVID, so it should have been 11, it was down to nine. How intense was that? Because obviously certain scenes are filmed out of sequence. And obviously with this film, it's almost like some of the scenes have completely different tones to them. So for you as actors going from one scene to another, how difficult was that with this particular film or or did you find it, you know, you mentioned earlier, Laura, it wasn't the hardest. So did you find it natural? How, how was that? I didn't 
find it uh, a bit like Lawrence said. I kind of took it. I learnt it like a play. So every single scene, to me, just felt like I just tried to focus on that one scene. What had happened before? What's happening in the scene? And what's going to happen after? But but more so, what came before that scene? Couldn't get duck. You you can't get too bogged down in everything else. You've got to just focus on what you're doing at that moment. So you're very much in the moment, you know, as an actor, that's really important. Uh, it, it was easy because I was working with an amazing actor and it was easy because I was working with an incredible director with some incredible writing, with an amazing crew, amazing locations, beautiful, wonderful people doing, and I mean, it's such an, an amazing experience making film, you know, it's like, um, you know, all of these wonderful creatives all coming together and creating something incredible. I think there's something about myself and Laura, we're, we're similar in the way that our first instincts are almost always comic. In yeah. like, <laughs> so we can very quickly find what's funny in a scene. And then what's dramatic is often sometimes a, an afterthought. And Marcus was really good at going, Actually, guys, what you what, what's great is happening is there's like nice chemistry happening here, but is that the truest version of the scene? So you go, yeah, and then you start sacrificing jokes or funny moments or looks for in the name of serving the story. So that Marcus was really good at keeping us in the boundary lines of, of the game we were playing. Yeah. Uh, when you say so tonally, I think there's a lot Marcus has to take credit for is, oh, yeah. you know, because in his head, we were playing at an opera and, and sometimes me and Laura can be quite sketchy if you know a sketch comedy i mean like yeah and, and laura's hilarious i mean <laughs> that's kind of funny you can go in with the best of them <laughs> and laura's is very funny as well but you know what that that's where the energy comes from and then you just channel that energy in a different you channel it into a different avenue um don't you agree like and, and we were quite good at keeping each other on track as well mm. But we're, mean, very, like, we're very emotional people too. Yeah. Laura, we're very like, I'm very sensitive. I'm very reactive to people. And so I, so if I, if I, you know, I'm generally, generally quite an empathetic person. So, so I think it's always, it's always kind of swimming away, you know, mm -hmm. whatever pain you're feeling or upset, could kind of, kind of bring it at the right moment. Because yeah. that's the hard thing is trying to find, when you're surrounded by crew and there's a cameraman, Chris Ferguson was kind of dancing around us with the camera, coming in close, walking away, getting wise, and then coming back in for extreme close-ups. And you kind of had to really stay on the ball. Martin, let me just say, when I said it was the easiest film I've ever done, what I, I don't mean I don't mean that so <laughs> as it sounds. What I mean, I mean it was exhausting. It was exhausting making this film, but in an, in an amazing way. Like I literally came home and slept for about a week, but it was the most incredible experience. It was, yeah, I just want to say that. So absolutely right. I mean, it was extraordinary. It really was. And Marcus is amazing. And like I was saying before, people are quite suspicious of Marcus. Like he throws scripts through their letterbox and he approaches actors, you know, around their agents or the professional manner sometimes or in the past he has. And actually there's nothing to be afraid of. I'd say anyone, if any actors who, you know, said no to Marcus in the past, I think you should have second thoughts because I think he's, he's a real deal, I think. He's a maverick, isn't he? He's a real maverick. In the true sense of the word, yeah. I've never one, met anybody like him. Never. The one thing that obviously he said in the in the last interview was that you know in the end he wouldn't have changed anything for the world. So obviously that's testament to you two, your performance, your relationship with him on set. So let's try and introduce Marcus if he's still there because he's been <laughs> he's been waiting for a while. He might have uh, might have gone. That was him getting in the in the door behind you. Oh hello, <laughs> hello Marcus. <laughs> 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 oh, he's changed. He's gotten younger. <laughs> <laughs> his, but that's his new Botox. Uh, uh, Botox. Wow. Hello. Marcus, Marcus is looking. Hello. Uh, I'm filling in for Marcus Marku. Um, <laughs> any questions? Just direct them towards me. And yeah. <laughs> Okay, Marcus. Well, uh, we've got Lawrence and Laura here. So, how would you sum up their performances in *The Wife and Her House Husband*? Ah, uh, it was moving, touching. Uh, I would say, uh, being on set, I cried quite a lot. It was, it was just, it was emphatic. <laughs> performances, 
were incredible. I could not get enough of them. Hello. What are you doing? Oh. Get out. <laughs> Sorry about that. Such a professional, <laughs> Marcus. <laughs> I love it. I just said stand in for me for a minute and then <laughs> I'm in the loo and all I just hear him doing the full Q&A. <laughs> well, How's he was, he, it going? He was filling us in about your relationship with Lawrence and Laura working with them on, on the film. So maybe you want to add to that? Well, I, I mean, it was, a, it was an intense experience, wasn't it? Um, uh, I, th I think... I think more intense than normal because it's very rare that you work on a script where there's just two characters the whole way through. So it felt like more like theatre and um, it was kind of shot like theatre as well. And yeah, it was exactly kind of prepared a bit. That's exactly what Lawrence and Laura have both been saying in terms of each scene one thing that I picked up on was how some of the scenes tonally are different. And for, 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 for the two actors, they were working on scenes one at a time, you know. Yeah, and, and the way we shot it in long takes meant that it felt theatrical. And because both Lawrence and Laura were so well prepared, even though we didn't have long to prepare, they gave so much time to the prep time that we did have that it meant that, and because Chris was shooting off the shoulder and because he was shooting um, sort of handheld, it meant it could, be, it could be more theatrical in the way that it was filmed. Um, because normally what happens is in filmmaking is you control the, the pace of a piece in the edit. So you shoot one actor, then you shoot the other actor, and then between those, two shots it's the edit that controls the exchange whereas what Lawrence and Laura were doing is they were controlling their own pace as actors as performers and therefore the there was no the the, the, the editing was kind of done by by Chris intuitively moving the camera as and when he felt and there's I looked at the in the grade we're in the grade at the moment and Chris came in and there's one the shot which he was worried about, which is outside the church. There's a church scene where they walk towards the church. Chris was kind of worried about that, but he was bowled over by just how well it worked. Effectively, it's two shots. It's walking up to the bollards, then from the bollards to outside the church, you stop. So it's three shots actually. And, and the way Chris kind of moves in on Laura, comes out for two shot, look, comes in on Lawrence a bit, then moves in on Laura again. He's kind of reading the story beats in a way an editor would do when cutting a film. That's what an editor would do, just that. But in a weird way, well, not such a weird way, in a very well-planned way, Lawrence and Laura are effectively know the story so well and they're, they're, they're producing the beats and the tone and the pace so well that it's up to Chris then to kind of read that and move in and out accordingly and I think I think that's really unique actually in filmmaking it's, it's unique and it's kind of like oh I want to do that again can we do that again can we make films like that again because that felt really good so Laura what what was your experience what was your most memorable experience with Marcus whether it was a bit of direction he gave you whether it was something funny on set what would you say the most memorable part of the the, the shoot was for you God, um, do you know, I don't, oh, there was one little moment where it was, it was the first day we were shooting. So we'd done our whole week of rehearsals and we were on, we were on the movie bench. We were sat on the movie bench and um, that's another story. And we were just sat and we were in between takes. And I just remember looking up at Marcus and he looked directly at me and I looked directly at him and I caught his eye, we caught each other's eye for probably about a second. And at that precise moment, I literally thought, I can't believe I'm sat here. And I can't believe I'm making this film. That's Marcus Marcou. <laughs> and he's directing me right now on Movie Bench. And 
I don't, I actually can't believe it. And it was a real profound moment for me. And it only lasted for about a second or two seconds. And then we looked away and we carried on with the rest of our day. And I said to Marcus the, ne the next day, I said, you know, I caught your eye yesterday. And he said to me, I remember that because yes, I, I remember that. I saw you, we looked at each other and, and I just, that really just um, made me smile. And I was like, wow, that, that moment that two people can have a moment at the same time, you know, I don't, this might've been for different reasons, my, whatever, but it, yeah. But there were so many other re so many other amazing moments on that film. But um, yeah, I don't know. What about, what about you, Lawrence? Any any major major memories, or have you tried to blank it all out already? <laughs> <laughs> no, I had. I mean, there are so many. I mean, there's a there's been a lot of laughter too. But there's one actually I'll never forget. And you can be quite cynical about people's motives for creating art, making films, or TV, or why they take on jobs. But when a man puts his money on the line and uh, puts his money where his mouth is, you know. There was one, the scene where um, Laura's been sort of left stranded while I walk away with my my new sort of current interest who I need to sort of clear up things with. And then we did one long take and then um, we were, then I managed to escape from the park where I was and I got to watch on the monitor and I got to watch Marcus watch the scene. And then we cut and he, he started watching it back and he sort of had it was almost like he was in the cinema watching it. Like he had a full on emotional connection to what he just filmed. So he'd seen it and then he was watching it back. And he, at first I thought, is he kind of, is he kind of doing a pantomime cry? But I was like, the man is actually, he's crying and he can't believe the footage he's captured. He was so, it was like he'd found gold and he'd sifted through a pan. And, and now I remember thinking, I've never ever seen that. And I don't know if I ever would again, Marcus, but it was really beautiful. I remember putting hand, my hand on your back, going, wow, like it blew me away. Remember and I remember actually been... over going, what's happening? Why is everybody <laughs> crying? <laughs> and that was weirdly caught on behind the scenes. Was it? Morgan got, yeah. I, and I tweeted a little bit of it the other day because I couldn't believe it when I saw it. It's like, um, yeah, but then, you know, I, I think it's... Um, I think it's, but I, I I felt a lot of that film when you were making it, you know. Mm. So, I, I I was kind of with I was with you, if, even though I'm sat behind a monitor sometimes. Yeah, you're so you know. receptive. So it's like you you're feeling and you're you you feel like sensory overload almost when you're making a film. I think so. I'm a very I'm very different person on a film set than I am when I'm not on a film set. I feel sort of more heightened and more engaged mm. and. Um, more energized and uh, I think it's because you've, if you've written the story and you've worked so hard on planning it and don't forget I started planning with Chris like how we were going to shoot it like nearly a year ago I've been looking at locations since September you know so it was it was and I know you guys didn't have time to think about it because you just were just thrown in at the deep end really quickly so I kind of and I've really wrote, I wrote that story so quickly. I wrote it in two weeks in the summer of 2020. So, and what I, what, what I loved was that how both you and Laura were just so perfect for the, for the piece. It was constant. Bear in mind, we all know that I had other people in my mind and you both came at the last minute. So for me, it was incredibly moving that you were so perfect for it. It was like, oh my God, I kept having to pinch myself. I couldn't believe I got the right two actors. But it's always happened for me. I've always got the right actors for the for the movie. And I, I have no control over how that happens. <laughs> so, just, so it, it, you know, so for me, part of the emotional experience was witnessing how, how at ease you both were with those characters and how the story came alive so organically. It was like a relief. Given the fact that we generally shot it in mind, Pardon? It's like a relief that at the last minute. It's not relief. It was just. <laughs> it wasn't relief. It was kind of like like even seeing Laura in the park. It was very moving because, I, you know, it's a very difficult thing to do to have like be on camera silently without engaging with anyone else. Just a camera in your face, really close up, and having to experience 
a, a kind of an emotional journey because she then has to compose herself when you come from behind her. So she's got to do all of that, like in one four minute take. Like, and then to see it, I was like, oh my God, we've got it. I didn't think we would get it because it's a really hard thing to do. Same with the pier scene at the end, you know, um, it's such a moving scene at the end. There is, people have watched it and they've wept, you know, so. so the way Chris works, you know, and which is very much how you and Chris, you know, you, you decided this was how you were gonna film it. It really did, um, it really helped elevate me as an actor and I think Lawrence as well, because you, all of the practicalities and, and uh, of, of filming are just taken away. I don't have to worry about standing on a mark. I don't have to worry about how I'm going to enter or exit. I haven't got to worry about where the camera is. Or It was like, it was freedom. It was like being told, don't worry about all of that. And that it was just so freeing. And that was- And that's how, that's how I make, but that's how I want to make, that's how I made films all the time, which is to be completely actor-led to be completely actor-led and um and to, to the camera should always serve the actor mm. you know i think rather than the other way around yeah. and um it's so much more exciting to work that way I you used to say um you used to say you know i give you permission i give you permission to do that and that was to have your permission to just go with it and not be caught up in the technicalities of the filming process, again, as an actor, is like a dream. And that's, I think, why it then becomes more like a theatrical piece, because when you're on stage, there's no hiding place. You know, you, you are just in the moment and you have to keep going until the end. And that's a lot of, a lot of those scenes. That's what me and Lawrence did. There was no hiding place really and we had to just keep going all the way through to the end you know yeah it's very rare that and i think it does re it does it, it you know it does require rehearsal you know and uh and the, the the we were very lucky that we had all that time to rehearse and explore these ideas and and get into it and you know it was oh, it was a joy really every minute was a joy even when it was in the middle of co you know co pandemic covid we had to stop shooting it was still a joy you know and, I, and when i took and you know you know you've done something positive when the crew respond to you in that same way when they're like oh i want to make you know they oh, when are we going to make the next one marcus when are we going to make the next one you know when the first says that when ari was saying uh, um uh, uh, agatha ben as well it's like you can you get a sense from them that's like oh this is how this is this is how we want to make movies in this way with this energy with this sense of freedom with everyone chipping in with everyone having their having their um having their say like like me not being scared to say to Chris what do you think say to Ben what do you think you know bringing everyone into the creative process mm -hmm. allowing everyone to take the lead where where possible right because I think that's a, I think good directing is almost facilitating in many ways, facilitating actor, giving permission to everybody, not just the actors, but to the DOP, to the sound recordist, to, to everybody, giving everybody permission, Agatha permission to, to be part of that, not just a script supervisor that sits in the corner, go, just making those sorts of, you know, left hand up, right hand down, glass was this, but to actually get her involved creatively as a script supervisor was really, exciting to see and get having her input as well creatively how else can we make movies yeah, yeah. Everyone's I, love, I, love, I love working with people who are just obsessed because once, once you hand me a role and in this case marcus has given me a really complex amazing character put me obviously in a brilliant actress with a brilliant dp everyone was obsessed with what they were doing and no doubt everyone was going home and then then the machine was still running you know that's the, like, when you surround yourself with people like that, I mean, who cares what the result is? We all, you know, we've got to do, you know, we all got what we wanted to do. We're just all racehorses, greyhounds, just want to go around the track. <laughs> look, at, look at how he's frozen. 